SBM Offshore has been working to complete the Prosperity FPSO, which will be the third such floating production storage and offloading vessel in Guyanese waters, just behind the Lisa Destiny and the Lisa Unity. Once installed, the Prosperity FPSO will be able to produce some 220,000 barrels of oil per day, and it will be able to store some 2 million barrels of crude oil. SBM Offshore, a Dutch-based global group of companies, was contracted to deliver the Prosperity FPSO, and it hired a number of Guyanese to get the job done. Now, the vessel is due to sail off from the capital shipping yard here in Singapore very soon. It's where we met Mr. Malik Lewis, one of SBM Offshore's graduate engineers. He spoke to us about the important role Guyanese are playing in the oil and gas sector. When I think about oil and gas in Guyana, I think about a revolutionary um, industry that has a number of ripple effects in a wide variety of other industries. I don't see it as an isolated um, impact. I don't think it will have an isolated impact. Rather, it will cause transformation in a number of ways. When in school, I was streamed into the business stream. Um, I was in business. I, I was actually in arts <laughs> the first day. Then I switched to business the same first day. And then I, um, after graduating, I ended up getting convinced to, to try engineering as the, as the final path. Well, before oil started, I was at the asphalt plant. I worked um, at the, with the Demerara Harbor Bridge Corporation for two years. Um, and then I, um, I got the call from SBM after going through a very rigorous uh, interview process. SBM came into the picture when my aunt sent me a very interesting newspaper clipping that uh, spoke about SBM offshore looking for trainees for a graduate engineering program. And I mean, I had no intention of joining the Alagas at that time because I thought that, you know, you would have had to walk, work offshore and it would have been challenging. But then I decided to, you know, go for it. And it was, it was interesting because as the more I learned about the companies, the more I wanted to be there. And then when they finally gave me the call, I um, was ready to, to, you know, venture into that new path. Um, not regretfully, of course. Engineering helped me to uh, go down a, a path that was quite interesting because in civil, you have procurement, you have um, construction engineering, you have structural engineering, you have, you know, all, all the things that, you know, we interact with daily in society, roads, bridges, um, buildings. And it exposed me to a world that I thoroughly enjoyed and helped me, you know, as I progressed onto different paths, because currently I'm no longer in, in, in engineering, I'm in supply chain, but I think the groundwork that was laid for me then helped to prepare me to where I am now and what I'm doing now. For me, I started off in the project controls department, so that focused on uh, managing various aspects of the project, materials, um, the plan, as well as the cost. And so I was involved in a number of exercises um, with the project team, project controls team to help, you know, you know, keep those variables in line. And then I also, at a, a particular portion of time, was involved in um, visiting Goxi and Infab and checking the progress of their fabrications uh, locally in Guyana. After I finished my stint in the project controls department, I moved on to procurement, um, speci specifically supply chain. And so I was trained, you know, for a number of uh, months in that department and it la landed me a role as a vendor callout coordinator. And uh, that role resulted in me having to come to Singapore to meet the vendors, to assist um, with um, activities here on site. I have a lot to do with Prosperity because my current role, vendor callout coordinator, is to um, ensure that the vendors are uh, coordinated for the offshore phase on the Prosperity project. As far as I know, the persons that work with SBM um, don't have any complaints, um, as well as the other persons I've met from a, a variety of other um, companies. They're glad for the opportunity to travel, they're glad for the experiences, they're glad that they can practice their engineering in a way that they never thought possible. And so it has really been beneficial um, for them entering into a whole new world. Personally, I am delighted, I am glad, I think I am in the best industry um, that will help to gear Guyana towards greater. And so I am, I am very privileged, I'm blessed, I'm honored to be in this role. Supply chain management focuses on um, meeting the direct needs of the project. 
whatever the needs may be in terms of services and equipment, materials, supply chain is involved in that process of you know, ensuring that that need is met from the initial um, request to the delivery, to all of the processes in line, to meeting with the vendors and coordinating those activities for um, ensuring that what we need is, is reached on time. Now, while most of you will be asleep on Tuesday night because of the 13-hour time difference, the official naming ceremony of the Prosperity FPSO will be taking place in Singapore Wednesday morning. First Lady Arya Ali is in Singapore for the event. She was the godmother of the previous FPSO, the Lisa Unity, and she's playing the same role for this Prosperity FPSO. In her speech, she's expected to talk about the significance of that name Prosperity and what increased production offshore Guyana will mean for the country and